I promise this is not a Hawkmoon video, but I do want to say, since this season has started, I've laid out about a thousand guardians with the Xur Hawkmoon. And because this is a meta where everybody has overshields, they get healing on repeat, they play very passively, Hawkmoon does work. I'm going to make an individual video on Hawkmoon at some point to just say, as long as you land shots, it's not wasted damage because you're working towards a pseudo special round, a pseudo sniper rifle bullet at the end of the magazine, as long as you're accurate. This is maybe one of the best designed exotics in the game period because it's accessible to new players seeing as it has a wild stat package, yet amazing to skilled and master players because you can play a mini game in the Crucible where you farm headshots and use the stacks accordingly. You don't have to save up for 7 to body shot somebody. You don't have to save up for 6 to headshot somebody. You could throw an empowering riff and purposely drop it down to 5 and get a 1 tap that way. Or you can purposely 2 tap if it calls for it. You can backpack with auto loading holster right here, hand cannon, miss some shots, but then play a little bit passive and reload it while everybody's waiting on their super. Hawkmoon breaks stalemates and for that it is an amazing weapon. However, it does lack in the range department and I'm not talking about range finder and then hitting even more range than I already have on this. Sometimes you need a scout rifle to do the job and previously if we want to look at dim here, I used dead man's tail and just a lightweight shoddy on stasis hunter to get elevation with the dust field grenade. However, I started messing around with symmetry on my hunter. You probably saw some awesome clips in the intro of me fooling around with this in Rumble to get a feel for it and learn some of the interactions with it. However, I ended up going back to Dead Man's Tail because the handling stat on this is abysmal. And I thought to myself, how can I fix the handling stat? I thought maybe I go Gunslinger and run the Dragon Shadow at home aspect so that if I dodge I get more handling. And while that was nice when it was active, I usually save my Gemini Jester for when we're making a team play or trying to put pressure on the opponents. I don't just burn it because it, it's fun. I burn it to win the round. And here's the thing. I thought about what else gives me handling. Well, of course, there's Dragon Shadow. But I could also just switch classes and play Warlock with the Fidian Aspect to get that plus 32 handling. It might actually be less now. I don't remember if they changed that in a recent patch, but whatever. We should be sitting at around 70 handling, which is excellent for a scout rifle. Now that I've said all that, this is what brought me to this conclusion. I need a Hawkmoon style win condition, but I need more range. So, symmetry it is. And if I needed less range, I would be using Terima. It's the same idea. You don't have to get a kill to increase the lethality of your gun. So, since I'm on Warlock anyway, I might as well go top tree Dawnblade. And there's an interesting part about Ophidian Aspects. It's plus 10 to the aerial effectiveness stat. And so if we want to look at Symmetry right here, it has an airborne of 23. So if I pop Heat Rises by consuming my grenade, it adds plus 70, which means we're going to be 7 short of perfect in-air accuracy and getting the most aim assist out of it. But Ophidian's plus 10 bumps that up to 100. So it solves two problems at once, which means that on the start of a round, I can throw my opponents off by taking a route like this that they're just not used to seeing anymore because no one jumps. Rapid fire, dodge out, pop more heads while I go to cover, rift up, and based on the amount of heads I hit, I either farm the remaining. Look, the rift still works on the ground. Farm my remaining, pay attention to the radar, and once I have the revolution stacks, should probably explain how this works 100%. So by landing headshots, it builds up dynamic charge. With a six stack of dynamic charge, I think it hits 98 to the body. So I try to get seven, so it hits over 100 and accounts for higher resilience guardians as well as healing and whatnot. So once I have a six or seven stack, I do the same thing. I pop revolution and I just spam this shit. I don't even try to aim it. I try to be really, really fast with it. Of course, my heat rises wasn't active there. I try to be really fast with it, and it overcorrects. Like, honestly, it feels a little too free for the work 
to start the perk, which is just live and hit headshots on an already long range map. So you're gonna see me using this piece of cover, the boats, bitch rock, this box right here, and floating off B flag uh, to get a lot of angles in gameplay if I ever post symmetry gameplay. So that's my game plan. My game plan is rotate all the way around from beach. I did a video yesterday on a map breakdown of exactly how I approach this map. And I stick to the strats, especially with this loadout. So rotate all the way around from beach, try to Icarus dash in. And while I'm Icarus dashing, I'm already in the heat rises pop animation. If I take damage from anybody, I finish the animation because it'll restore some health. Then I throw down a rift so that when my teammates push up aggressively, they have a rift to use. Or I save the rift, I fly to boats, use my uh, third person animation right here, see if somebody's posted up on the box or on the island, and I go from there. I just try to be a really hard kill. But unfortunately, a scout rifle isn't good at close quarters, unless of course you proc revolution, which by the way, I don't need heat rises for it to be good. Doesn't matter if I have zero AE, this is still gonna two tap at a seven stack. That's amazing. So, this is my conclusion. Deliverance Fusion Rifle. Again, let's go look at some stats on DIM. We have an airborne of 24 with the Icarus grip, plus 10 from the Ophidian, and plus 70 from Heat Rises. So when Heat Rises is active, this is going to be an accurate gun. I don't know if it's aim assisted. So yeah, I built into this. Unfortunately, I'm poor and can't craft the one that I want to craft. I'm going to probably make a video on this too. I might make two or three deliverances to fit builds. And I had this sitting in my vault at like level 15 or something. Spent a little bit in Shirochi to finish it the rest of the way. And I just didn't have a purpose for it yet. I don't even like using fusion rifles. Yet, this answers something for me in this loadout. On this map in particular, sometimes you have to push that dark tunnel. And having a fusion rifle makes me feel so much more confident doing that. So sometimes I'm at these boats and people fly at me and I will scare them off with the sound of the fusion rifle or just slide and full commit. That is an easy 15 to 20 meter kill with this fusion rifle. The role that I am thinking about is tap the trigger in perpetual motion, particle repeater, arrowhead break, and a charge time masterwork. I could deviate from the plan and go steady hands to improve my handling further, but I don't think it's necessary. Maybe I even stick to Demolitionist since a lot of my game plan is built around Heat Rises. Though, I feel like I have my nade plenty enough already. At least tap the trigger is 100% what I'm going to go for. I'll decide on this one later. I don't even have to make it enhanced. Anyhow. The range coverage of both of these weapons is phenomenal. And a fusion rifle is very ammo efficient since usually if you fire it, you're going to get a kill. One bullet of a fusion rifle goes way farther than a bullet of a shotgun for trying to handle the close quarters. Of course, if I'm trying to peek like this corner and someone has a shotgun, I am toast. So I wanna use the speed of Icarus Dash to uh, get in, create some space, and I want them to be sliding at me as I backpedal. And if the fusion rifle whiffs because I walk over a rock and it considers me in air or something, Celestial Fire doesn't care. It'll hit through barricades. It's awesome. And uh, finally, Firebolt. I know restoration grenades are the move, but considering how much I pop heat rises, I want this uh, cooldown as fast as possible. Uh, not to mention that it is also a damage grenade. So if I know somebody's going for a revive, just throw the nade. Let the nade do the work. It has a pretty good search radius, and now it scorches on hit, which means it does damage over time, which means that they can't get the revive while I get my health back just naturally through 10 recov. I hope this explanation and demo makes sense here as to how I build crafted this one. This is just one play session. I put 150 kills on the cemetery. So it, it does work. I haven't dropped a game of freelance yet, even though matchmaking sometimes lets me down. I think I'm going to stick to this in a team environment on this map, maybe on Eternity, and maybe in the Swamp. If you enjoyed this video, found it useful, learned something new, let me know in the comment section, and I will see you in the next one. Enjoy the gameplay.
Find your enemy. Knocks him down. I know you have done this before.
Outside. Yes. 